glad you're doing this because you said something the last time. I was like, man, why didn't I write that down? Yeah, yeah. So, so just in case you want to take any notes. Thank Every you. once in a while, Jonas, you say things that are just like, okay, that's brilliant, and I've never heard that. Before. And that's when I should write it down. Yeah, that, that is no, exactly okay. what we should write down. I'll even pause for you to write down. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. So we have Jan, Jan and Deb. Mm -hmm. Jane. No, Jan. It is Jan. Okay. Oh, 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 yes, okay. you're right. Okay. No, you're right. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Jan, Deb, and Amit, and Jonas. And we have Russ, and this hey, is being Russ. filmed. Uh, community television. Hello. Community oh, television. No. You're going to be famous. Proud of the Public. Whoops. Proud of Just proud. Just proud. Just a okay. confirm. Well, for those of you who don't know me, which we have our, our new arrivals, my name is Jonas Kane, and I am a facilitator of fascination and purveyor of positivity. My job is to facilitate positive experiences for, for folks and then to uh, help people live more positive lives. Now, you were here last month. We talked about the magic of positive influence. So today we're going to take the ideas that we, that we touched on last month and we're going to expand upon them today for your, for your benefit. But of course, to start off, for the fascination part, we have a little magic trick. And it's really, it's more of a demonstration of influence. I'm going to try and influence one of you. I'm going to try and influence you. Now we've never met before today, right? Right, never met. You look so happy about this too. <laughs> Here's the idea. I'm going to take out two cards at a time. I'm going to demonstrate first what I'm going to have you do, and then you're going to do it for real. I'll take out two cards at a time. You have to decide. Is it a red card or is it a black card? I, now, I don't want you to think I'm influencing you. I will, but I don't want you to think that I am. <laughs> so which card is red, which one is black? Um, I think um, I think that's the red, that's the black. That's exactly right. <laughs> Very good job. Are you psychic? <laughs> What's going on here? No, you are. Oh, I'm the psychic. I'm the psychic one. Let's, let's try it again. We're going to try this again, but this time we're going to do this for real. This was just the demonstration. Now we're doing it for real. If you think it's red, we'll put it here. If you think it's black, we'll put it there. All right. Which one's red? Which one's I'm going to mix it up. Which one's red? Which one's black? I'm not going to show you this time until, until the end. Okay. Um, okay, I... Actually, let me mix it up some more. Mix, 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 mix. <laughs> okay, okay, which one's red, which one's black? So for now, I will still say I think that's red, that's black. Okay. Uh, which one is red, which one's black? The same. Red, same. black. Okay. We won't go through all the cards, we'll just do okay. a few of them. All right, next. <laughs> I love her concentration. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna say red, black. So this is black. Black. All right, and this one's red. All right, let's do, let's, let's do uh, maybe one or two more. Okay. All right. And then we're gonna switch it up a little bit. We're gonna see how, perhaps you can do this. You can try this too. All right, which one's red, which one's black? Okay, uh, I'll go back. Red, black. Red, black. black. We'll, we'll just do one final and okay. then, then we'll give someone else a turn. All right, which one's red, which one's black? Um, I'm going to switch it up. Okay. So red, black. So this is black and this is red. Yeah. All right, so far, so good. Now, again, I'm not going to show you until the end, but this time, because we're switching it up, this is your, your daughter. My daughter, Deb. Your daughter, Deb. Nice to see you, Deb. Now, um, how do you think your, your mother did? I think she did 100% correct. 100% correct. Well, <laughs> this, this is a magic trick, too, so I, let's, let's hope so. Let's hope it works out. But let's switch things up. Since, since this is a new person, we're going to place the black ones over here this time. We'll place the red ones over here. So, so now it's just changing it up a little bit. Different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take out da, da, da. mix, mix, mix. Which one's red? Which one's black? Um, let's go red, black. So this is red mm -hmm. and this is black. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think? Red, black. Red and black. All right. 
this one and that one. Red. Red. Black. And black. Mm -hmm. All right. Just a couple more. Um, red. Yep. And then black. black. Yep. One more. Red and black. Red and black. All right, so you're going to take a look at these ones, mm -hmm. and I'm going to take a look at these ones. Let's take the, that now. Mm -hmm. Let's see how you did. Okay. How you did and how you did. So the ones on the bottom are for my mom. So they'll be red, and the ones on the top for me. We'll show the camera too so they can see that you, they did a wonderful, amazing, everyone at home, let's give them a nice big hand. Very nice. I love your face. It's the magic of positive influence. It sorts things out perfectly. So that's, aren't you glad you came all the way from Virginia? I really am. Just because to come no, here and have a about positive. This. I can figure that one out. You see, that's the power that influence can have when we're intentional about our influence. Because so often we just go go throughout our lives unintentional about our interactions and our words with with people. But when we when we're intentional, it can have the potential to facilitate positive experiences amazing experiences like the one that, that we just had. Now it does, of course, take some work. It takes some, some pre-planning. It takes note-taking, <laughs> right? It takes a little bit of, of, of research, but that's what today in this presentation is gonna be about. A number, uh, for the past several years actually, I've been, every summer I teach at a camp in, in Westfield, Massachusetts. It's uh, at Westfield State University. It's called College for Kids. It's for like seven to like 14, 15 year olds. And I teach a magic class there. So during that whole week, I spend time teaching them how to do magic tricks. And perhaps the hardest part of the whole week is keeping them focused for three and a half hours a day, <laughs> all five days. <laughs> but then at the end of the week, they put on a magic show for their friends and for their their family and overwhelmingly what the parents are most amazed by is not by the tricks I mean the tricks are fun but what they're amazed by is that their kids are actually getting up in front of people and speaking and doing something that they had just learned mm -hmm. and that that transformation for the parents is just so amazing to them now that is real magic because uh, ever since I've been a little boy, I've always been looking for the greatest magic trick of all. I th always thought it would have to do with making something big disappear, like my school or something. <laughs> or sawing someone in half, like my teachers, you know. <laughs> but I eventually realized that real magic has nothing to do with, with those sort of things, but it has to do with these positive experiences. The fact that I, even today, that I'm doing magic shows and I make my living out of public speaking, no one would have guessed. If you had asked my teachers when I was five, six, seven, eight years old, they never would have guessed that I'd be even talking to you three today and, and you and all whoever's watching. <laughs> because I was so shy that I wouldn't even hardly talk to my own family. And when I did talk, I had such a severe stutter that no one could understand what I was saying, except for my mom. My mom had the amazing ability, because mothers know. Mothers know their, their kids. Uh, so the fact that I'm doing this today is real magic itself. Because once I realized that I had a fascination for magic, I realized that in order to do magic, you have to talk to people. It's not something you can do alone. It's something that you have to develop these social skills in order to do. But empowered and encouraged by having these new skills, that gave me the courage to step up and finally talk to people and become an active citizen in, in our world. That is real magic. And whenever I do magic, like the one I just did, what was the question that was on your mind? How'd you do How's that? How's going at you? That's what we all want to know, right? <laughs> That's always the question. How is this possible? And the real answer 
The real answer is never what people think. Now, uh, pe people often think maybe it's smoke and mirrors, maybe not for this trick, but, you know, maybe it's, it's something to do with that. But the real answer is revealed in those two examples I just gave you about the, 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 those kids at the camp and about me overcoming shyness to talk to, to people. The real magic, it's learning to get along with people. And it's, it's, it's learning to get along with people for, for ourselves, but then also being able to empower others along the way. There's a famous quote by Theodore Roosevelt. He said, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna paraphrase, the single most important ingredient in the formula of success is learning to get along with people. And I'm sure you have your own examples of this in your own life, but I, I know for my, myself, especially as a magician, that uh, this is very true. Because people don't care necessarily about my magic or what I have to say until they know that I care about them. People don't care about how they can help me unless I can demonstrate that I can help them in some way. And certainly, people aren't going to follow my lead unless I can demonstrate that they can trust me. So learning to get along with people is truly the most important single ingredient in the formula of success. So that's what t this, this presentation is. Now we talked about a couple ideas last, last month, but today we're gonna go over three strategies for answering those three important questions, the questions that everyone wants to know. Do you care about me? Can you help me? Can I trust you? And so, so these three practices that that we're going to share and then we're going to open up for a discussion, it's going to be able to answer these questions with a resounding yes. And the first one is a strategy that I, I, I know we, we all at least know of and we probably use it in everyday life. Let me skip through my notes here. Oh, here it is. The first strategy is the build rapport strategy because Everyone wants to know if, if we care about them. People don't want to work with us unless, unless they like us, unless uh, we are like them, or at least we accept them and, and understand who they are. If we can establish any one of those three things, then we can start to build rapport with, 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 with someone. The problem is that there's barriers to rapport. There's barriers to this engagement. Rapport is all about engagement. And so the first thing we're going to do is talk about the barriers and we're going to see which ones perhaps you've experienced in your own life. The first one is the assumption barrier. Now this one is the one that says, I already know what others know. I already know what they feel. And I already know what they want. That's the assumption barrier. Number two is the arrogance barrier, which is, I don't need to know what others know, feel, or want. <laughs> That's the arrogance one. Number three is the indifference. I don't care to know what others know. I don't care what they feel. I don't care about what they want. And lastly, number four is the control barrier. I don't want others to know what I know. I don't want them to know what I feel, and I don't want them to know what I want. That's the control barrier. Now these barriers can be put up by others or they can be put up by ourselves. So let's, let's just pause here for a moment, sort of touch base and see if you've experienced any of these barriers in your own life with people, whether family, friends, coworkers, strangers, <laughs> you'll be on the street or, have you ex experienced these? Yeah. I think so. Any, uh, I mean, should, uh, is, there, is there a particular one maybe you, you find more often that maybe the assumption, arrogance, indifference, or, or, or control is or one that you find often as you go about your life? I think they're all true, but the thing that just came up with that word control is, you know, my dad had this saying, keep them guessing. <laughs> <laughs> like I grew up with a dad who had that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the control. Yeah. And I found the two, the first two I thought were kind of related. Hmm. The um, assumption. In, uh, assumption and, and arrogance. And arrogance, because um, 
I, I just feel like someone who's arrogant sort of assumes that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they already know and, and whatever. And that is hard to make or to form a relationship with someone and to want to work effectively with them if they have that whole attitude. Mm -hmm. So for you, the big one was control. You've, you've seen that the first two are very much related, assumption and arrogance, and come, come, comes, up, comes up a lot. Um, how, how about you, Deb? Which one for you stuck out the most? Uh, maybe the assumption barrier. I can think of some examples um, from situations in my life where people, whether it's myself or the other person, but there's assumptions being made that we learn later on weren't true. And we all can fall under that assumption barrier because everything that we see and, and understand, everything that's coming at us, we're coming at it through this filter of our past experiences. Mm -hmm. And so we make a lot of assumptions in our everyday lives. Just to show you a quick, quick example, the magic pen can cling to my hand just by rubbing it on my coat and magically it clings to my hand. Now this works mainly because you hold it this way. You don't hold it this way. <laughs> I love her so much. Because <laughs> I reveal so easily what I'm thinking. Very expressive. Because <laughs> I totally bought into it. <laughs> And that's, and that's why this works. It's our assumptions, right? Because notice, if you see someone wrap their hand around their wrist, you assume you're going to see all right. five fingers here. You don't have to count the fingers. You're, you're assuming, <laughs> right? There's a finger missing, but you don't notice it because we're blind to it. <laughs> oh, my God. I need I'm you to count every month. Okay. <laughs> Let it work well for you. I want to say something about the indifference one too, because that one, it seems to be something that I'm understanding more as I get older, mm. like as I become more invisible. Mm. You know, I never was invisible when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I was a very social butterfly, and I was out there, and I was a, you know, healthy white young woman, and I had some influence and power in, in the community. But now I find that I am fairly invisible to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it, and it's not. They're indifferent to me. So so it's not a change in your attitude, but it's a change in other people's attitude towards you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I find that people are indifferent to someone who is not going to serve them in some way. You know, I like street people. A lot of people are. They'll walk right by and not even have eye contact or say hello mm -hmm. or say, you know, oh, you're in a tough spot or whatever. And maybe there's an assumption there that this person wants something from me and I, I want to avoid that. But there's also indifference. Like I just don't, they're not serving me. And I didn't realize that until I met a business person. Like in this creative little town, we don't have, you know, city business people attitude. But when I met a city business person attitude, he was very much into positioning himself with who he knew. So he only wanted to know people who could serve him. And I didn't know that about people before that. That's you know, interesting. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about um, the indifference, indi being indifferent to someone who's not serving you. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a, a big point that I, I, I very much glossed over a, a lot of this. But one thing that, uh, a tool that, that we use for influence, positive influence, I like to qualify positive influence because influence can be negative too. Mm -hmm. But for positive influence, uh, there's something called the influence compass, and uh, if you think of a of a compass, uh, we, we have this this big circle, a little dot in the middle, that's self influence. So the question there is, would we follow ourselves? Or, you know, would, do we? If we weren't us, like if you weren't you, would you be doing? Would you want to do what you're doing? <laughs> right. So this the self influence, and then down south, there's positional influence, which is what, what you were talking about, about the idea that uh, this person assumes they have some sort of a position over you, which at work, it might be the case where you have a boss and you have employees, right? Or it could be teacher to students, or it could be elder to younger, you know? <laughs> you know so th there's this idea that you have a position over someone. And 
Uh, and then there's vertical east to west. Uh, there's uh, peer influence among your peers where they, it's a higher level of influence because they don't necessarily have a reason to be influenced by you unless they, they want to, right? Yeah. And then north, we have influencing the influencers. So it's the people who have the power. Maybe it's the superintendent of a school, or it's the mayor of a town, or, or a city, or it's just someone, a celebrity, who has influence, being able to influence them. Now that person, just like the business person as well, also has no reason to want to be influenced by us, but if we can find a way to gain positive influence with them, then saying something to them or doing something with them will be able to multiply the influence exponentially, which is why positive influence, not negative influence. That's what I want to do. I want to influence the influence of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's my goal too. <laughs> so, so how do we do that? What do you think? We could have a good magic trick to get their attention. <laughs> that's that's true. That's that's one of the reasons I use magic in my presentations because it, it engages. It, it turns it turns people's awareness perhaps from indifference to intrigue or fascination. And that's that's actually another point. It's about um, it's about what we already know. It's about what we already do well. How we are able to influence others. It's going to be not in what we don't do well or what we know nothing about. It's always going to be something that we do know. Um, in fact, in fact, talking about rapport, there's several ways that, that we can gain influence in this way. And one way is by, by what we know. It's by who we know. It's by how we lived. It's by the sacrifices that we've made. So there's several different components. It, it's, it's about our passions, it's about our character, it's, it's about uh, our integrity. So there's lots of different ways that we could connect with people. And it depends on, on who we are, it also depends on where they are. And there's, uh, there's three main points that can help us overcome those barriers to influencing, whether it's the influencers, whether it's our peers, or also overcoming positional influence because just because we have a position over someone that doesn't necessarily mean that that we are good people <laughs> and that they should follow us but how do we have a positive influence and these three choices will help us overcome this barrier and also help us to figure out how to influence those influencers so uh, let's go over these uh, well the first one is an obvious one uh, but some people skip it it's choosing to be likable. And some people skip this because they don't feel like they need to be liked. Think, you know, I, I don't need to be your friend, <laughs> you know? But, but some people even see it as a weakness. Uh, and, and also, uh, there's a difference between being likable to serve a higher purpose and being li likable to feed a proof of worship. That's a huge one, too. I mean, especially me as, as a performer, I, I, I need people to like me, because if not, the audience is gonna turn on me real quick. <laughs> so, uh, but it's, it's certainly for a higher purpose. I'm not doing it to feed my, my ego, I'm doing it because I have something to share. <laughs> I need everyone listening, <laughs> I need everyone engaged. Uh, the other thing is, okay, so a way to become likable, this is, ties into this next choice is curiosity. One of the best ways for someone to get onto your side is to be curious about them and ask questions about them. Because one, you get to know them a little bit better so you can figure out how you might be able to build rapport with them. But also, something, even if it's just subconsciously, it lets them know that you care enough about them to ask questions. So that also answers that, that question. Do you care about me? Well, you're asking questions about me, so you must care about me even just a little bit, right? And then, lastly, the other choice is to choose to be humble. And this is another one that people oftentimes skip over because they think it's a weakness. They think that they need to be superior to others. We all like to think that we're the center of the universe, even if it's, you know, you know the, the ego is, it likes to be in control. But humility is better associated as a strength 
uh, people who are, are, are humble don't necessarily think less of themselves. They just think more of a higher purpose. And they are about empowering others and giving them what they need to serve that, that higher purpose. And then they can step out of the way if need be. Right? So those are the, the three choices that have this little through line to, to get over those barriers. Uh, I'm curious to find out uh, if you know of any other choices or what your experience is with these three choices uh, to overcome. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, that's OK. You're just in time. We're, we're talking about choices to overcome barriers to rapport and engagement. Yeah, and then let me give you a little note card if you want to take any notes. There you are. What's your name? I'm Beth. Beth. Nice to see you, Beth. Welcome. welcome. And I, I saw you at Ashley's birthday party. Oh, yes, yes. Love it. Welcome. Welcome. I appreciate you coming out for this. I wanted to get here earlier. Anyway, here I am. Okay. <laughs> You're here now. This is Deb. Okay. This is, this is Jan. 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 Well, you know, I, know. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the way you um, brought up, I mean, the way you interacted with Ashton. Just wanted to say that. You folks weren't there. Ashton was such a who. Do you, do you know Ashton? I've met Ashton. Yeah. He is a performer. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks he has stage fright. Oh, by the way. He thinks he has stage fright? <laughs> yeah, he won't join drama kind of events and that was so interesting huh he's a natural <laughs> you couldn't get him off the stage <laughs> well he wasn't the focus i mean you were literally the focus. <laughs> he, he stayed up on the stage for the whole show <laughs> he thinks he's shy he thinks he has stage oh fright. stage fright he's stage not fright. shy stage fright. he's naturally got the ability to entertain, but if you put him in a position to entertain, it mm. causes him to freeze up. So, so as long as he's not the focus. No, he's okay with being the focus. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, if but as long as you don't focus. put the focus light on and yeah. say, we are all watching you and you have to perform for us. Exactly. Yeah. So He'll get in the light by himself if we don't tell him. Right. <laughs> so it makes a good sidekick. Well. Yeah, it makes a good sidekick. That's a great way to play. I, I, you know, I really, uh, at, at the magic show, I, I kind of felt like he was my Ed McMahon. Yeah. yeah. Was my Paul Schaefer. You know. Yeah. 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 That's great. Right. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, no. No, and, and that's really um, what this presentation is all about. It's about, it's about positive influence and in, in being able to learn to get along with people. And uh, if I had gone into that magic show with the idea, I'm going to do these magic tricks, I'm going to, I'm going to say my script just as I wrote it out, it would not have worked. <laughs> because... <laughs> Not only did he have his own ideas, but all the other kids had their own ideas. <laughs> right. That if I didn't deviate from the path when they did, I would have I would have lost control. Right. I, I wouldn't have been able to, to get through the, right. the performance. Right. But being able to play with that influence a little bit, to be able to play with that engagement mm -hmm. that allowed me to stray from the path but then get back on so that we could continue until we made another stop along the way, another, another, another pit stop. Well, you yeah. did all of these three qualities of you know, how to be a positive influencer. You chose to be likable. You were curious about what they were saying and doing and where they were going every step of the way. <laughs> and it was all surprising. And you also got out of the way. You were humble. You got out of the way to let somebody else shine. And you even brought out other people's, um, I don't know, gifts and mm -hmm. qualities that you know you, you picked people and then wound in, like when you picked um, one of our neighbor girls to do the trick, and then she said something about her brother, and you just, he was yeah. super shy and wouldn't come in by himself, but you just were talking to her about him, and brought him in, um, and got out of the way and let them have a little show. They were, you know, they were the leaders of the show for a moment. You did that with everybody. 
And that's actually the uh, one of the other strategies that we're going to talk about, which really all of these strategies are, I say they're separate things, but they're really all related. But to talk about them, we have to have these little containers to talk about things. That's why we all have names. Imagine if we didn't. <laughs> That's why we have boundary lines, because otherwise, what town would we be in? Right. Where would we be? But, but that's another point about, about giving others the, the spotlight. This other strategy is, is called the, the polish the gold strategy. And, and, and there's three things I love about that. First, in order to polish someone's gold, you have to find their gold. <laughs> so many people are so unaware of what makes them special, what makes them unique. They're unaware of the knowledge and skills that they bring to the table. That the first thing to polishing is you have to invest the time to dig into it, be curious, ask questions, and humble yourself to, to get out of the way to, to find it, and then let them know, know, know about it. And then you get to empower them with, with shine by, by giving, by helping them uh, with with new skills, with additional knowledge, equipping them to, to become empowered to be able to separate all the cards, <laughs> to be all reds and all blacks, or being able to help them make the knot at, at the magic show, the knot jump from one side to the other. I'm just still curious about how you did that one. <laughs> just said that I was just like, yeah, that's right. How did you do that? <laughs> it's magic. It's a So what do you have ever been example of So I'm talking with someone. I'm trying to, I'm getting to know someone, so I'm asking questions, I'm curious about their, what their thing is. And so now I'm at the step of empowering them with shine. Yeah, so, so once you get to know someone, you get to know what their strengths are, you get to know um, their history, you get, get to know what they, what they bring to the table, you know what they do well. And then what you do is, it's sort of, the, there's this, this book out, it's called High Performance Habits. It's by Brendan Burchard, and he has a quote in there saying that a high performer in, in any, what does he say? Oh, yeah, he, he, he gave the example of a Super Bowl winning quarterback doesn't just know how to throw a ball. Someone may, be, may know, know how to throw a ball, but that doesn't mean they know how to win a Super Bowl. Right. So empowering someone to, to shine their, their goal is to uh, coach them along to figure out what skills and knowledge touch those things that they already do well? What what periphery skills and knowledge are they going to need to learn? They're going to need to know uh, nutrition. They need to know discipline to work out every day, even when you don't want to. You have to know contract negotiation. <laughs> you have to know about brand building. You have to know about all these things that have nothing to do with throwing the ball. But in order to go to the next level. Uh, you're going to have to learn all, all of these periphery things. Can you give us an example about who this person is? Oh, well, uh, uh, so I have a friend who, um, I can only no, she's not quite, she's in her late 20s and finishing up her master's degree project, reluctantly, and she knows she has to finish it. And she's not sure what direction she's going in. And um, so there's some things. Yeah, so, so, so she's not, not really sure what, what her next step is going to be. Right, right. I mean, she, wants, she needs a job. She wants to get a job, but she wants to work on something that is related to this thing. Yeah. But she's not sure what's going to be here. She's going to move someplace else. And she doesn't even know what her job is. And how old is she again? Her late 20s. Late 20s. Mm -hmm. now, now, one thing that... I've discovered for myself, and I'd be interested to know what, what your answer to this would be too, but what I've, what I've discovered is that we don't need to know the forever plan. Right. We just need to know what's next. And uh, because if we think that we need to have everything figured out, well, we're never going to do anything because nothing is ever perfect. The plan is never as clear as day. We just have to... Um, I. I'm reading a book now called Einstein and the Rabbi by Naomi Levy. And she, talks, she tells a story about how one day she got pulled over by a police officer because she didn't stop. <laughs> stop. So she thought she stopped. But he's like, no, you gotta, you got to stop, count to three, make sure nothing's coming, and then go. And what she took away from that was is 
is you just need to know what, you know, what's, what's, she gave it the, the example, what's the next three months going to look like? You know, where do I want to be? Where, where, where could I be? I don't have to do this for the rest of my life, but I need to do something. I can't be paralyzed by choice. I just need to choose something and try it for the world. So, what, what would be my how could I be helpful in that process? Hire her a coach. <laughs> <laughs> she can't afford a coach. <laughs> I'm sure she can work it out. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good point. You know, I, 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 have, I have two coaches in my life. I have one, I have, I have a magic coach. He helps me work on my magic. And I also have a business coach. He helps me work on my, on my business skills, which I know a lot about magic. It's, but this coach is helping me get better. I, I, I'm a terrible businessman. <laughs> so you need that. <laughs> I definitely need that. I definitely need that. that. That's one of those periphery skills that I'm building. But I'm also not just focusing on my weaknesses. I'm still focusing on my strengths, too. But yeah, coaches can do wonders. I mean, that's what some coaches do, is they try and help yeah. They look for the inner inner voice. They ask the right questions that they're looking for that inner passion that'll drive the, the question of where you want to be in ten years and then come back and just look at the first step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even five years. One year. Five years. Or even next week. <laughs> right. Next week. <laughs> Some people it's just I wanna pay rent this month. Okay, how do we do that? Right. So um, so if it's not a not possible to work it out financial plan about hiring a coach, then what would be another way that I could be helpful? Well, it sounds right. like you're serving kind of like her, her mentor business then. You know, there's, there's lots of, of different types of coaching and mentor relationships. Yeah. So, so you're... Your, your friend who wants to help out, and I, I think one is what we were talking about earlier is is asking questions, just like a coach would, because a coach doesn't have answers. Coaches only have questions, and it, it's it's the person who has all all the answers. It, it's it's like looking for for that gold. You just you have to you have to dig it out. There's actually a, a quote in here. It's actually right here. It's a uh, it's Andrew Carnegie, and he was the wealthiest steel manufacturer in the world at one time. It said that he had 43 millionaires working for him. 43 millionaires, and this was back when you know, millionaires were, were pretty unique. And he was asked, well, how did you attract so many millionaires? And he said, oh, well, when they started working for me, they weren't millionaires. <laughs> there we go. It was as a result, he said that developing people is the same as mining for gold, which is why this is so appropriate here. You actually talk about mining for gold and developing people. When you mine for, for gold, you have to dig away tons and tons of dirt just for one little ounce of gold. The thing is, you don't go into the mine looking for the dirt, you go into the mine looking for the gold, and you don't stop until you, you find it. So that, that's what a coach does. That's what a someone who wants to, to help someone and, and um, helps them find the goal is to keep probing questions. So often we stop at the surface answers. But the answer we give isn't necessarily the core answer, it's just what, we, what we're aware of on, on the surface. And one of my, my coaches just, I remember one, one day, all day, he just yes. kept asking me the same question. He was asking in different ways, and I kept giving him deeper and deeper answers. And it's like, had, it's like, oh. <laughs> That's that's the real answer. I was just giving answers based off of okay. maybe my, my past experiences or, or or my preconceived notions of how things should be. So so I would say ask some questions uh, and just keep asking. And and, and also um, you know what's what's next month look like? What is six months look like? What's next year, five years, what's 10 years look like? If you could wake up at some point being the person that you most want to be, what does that look like? Who is she? What does she look like? And then how did she get there? What's the very first step that she took? It's a really good point. 
quick coaching course. Another great, great visualization is to is, you know, visualize who that person is five years from now, ten years from now. What does their day-to-day -day schedule look like? You know, what time do they wake up? What's the first thing they do when they wake up? Where do they eat for lunch? Who do they hang out with? What are they doing? That's, uh, that's one that I've used is to think. What's my what's what's my future self? What's my schedule? I'm still working on. I'm, I'm getting there. That's why I'm here. I, you know, you know, this is this is me working that that plan that I made for that visualization. I'm doing presentations every day. That's <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Every first or second Friday of the month, you all should come down. <laughs> Where? Here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's worth, and I'm going to just say it's worth it every time. It's not like coming once is the answer. Every time you come at it from different angles and offer new thoughts and yeah, coming as much as you can. So you're going to be here once a month. Once a month. Yeah. And it's usually the first or second Friday of the month. I think lately it's been second Friday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's that's another thing that will help you know, realize too is every month we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about positivity, but there's other angles to come at it. There's other. It, it's not just put on a happy face, which actually scientifically does help. Scientifically, the the muscles in our face when we smile it sends off these little transmitters, making this. Feel happy even if we were not happy. Mirror neurons. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. mirror neurons. Yeah. Mirror I neurons. have in me mirror neurons that will mirror what I see. Mm -hmm. They will automatically mirror it. It's built in. It's oh. neuroscience. It's magic. Yeah. And magic. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's always magic. People often ask me why I smile so much. And Art, it's, it's for two reasons. It's just like what we're talking about here today, about the, those two stories I talked about, how, how when I was a kid, I was incredibly shy. And now I, uh, I go in and I, and I help kids at that, at that summer camp every year by helping them overcome their, their shyness by learning magic. By smiling, it helps me feel good. But then it sends, even if it's just subconsciously mirroring, people will tend to smile when they see someone else smiling. So, and it's free. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't have to pay a thing. You're like, why are you so happy? I don't know. <laughs> I just am. That's great. Laughter does that too. I, I was listening to something on NPR about laughter, and they don't really understand why, but it's like scientifically proven that we respond to laughter by laughing. And they were talking about it, it's it's not even just unique to humans. That um, I think they said rats <laughs> have a way of laughing, but, which is kind of strange to think about hyenas. that experiment. Yeah, hyenas. hyenas. Yeah. Well, now sometimes when I look at my cat, if I'm like stroking her, petting her, uh, there are times when it looks like she's yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, well, is she really smiling? Yeah, I know she's feeling content. Yeah, <laughs> she is. Right, Smiling. that's why you look sad. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for laughing. <laughs> um, I need to get going. Uh, it was so nice see to meet you. you. Thank you. It was nice Hope to see you again. Yeah. Jonas? I will see you here. Okay. Okay, bye. 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 Nice to meet you. Bye. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Always. Have a good afternoon. Okay, thanks. Yeah, stay positive. Okay. Yes. Like this. Oh. Angles. Yeah. Angles to stay positive. Literally. Like Literally. Angles. Yeah. Angles. Mm -hmm. That's very good. There's some of what you started saying before about um, finding the gold, I think was the phrase that you used. Yeah. Um, as a teacher, it reminded it resonated with me because it reminded me of things that you know using different
terminology that we do in education to try to find what is the passion of our students. And um, by finding that, you usually can engage them. If you, if you can, even if they don't know what their passion is, if you can help them identify it, or um, if you can tell what a student's passion is, and then help that student bring it out more to, to demonstrate it in different ways, you can, going back to what you said earlier, make connections. You, you make connections with that student and they're more willing and happy to work with you on, you know, on whatever else they need to do in the classroom. So it all, it all makes a lot of sense. That's good teaching. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. Yeah. It's all connected. It, you know, it all relates. You know, when, when someone, one, it, it, it's, I know for me in school, I was I was the music student. I was I was I was the one in band. That, that's that's what I lived for. You know, math class, science class wanted nothing to to do with My it. My husband would love to meet you. Oh, as a yeah? music teacher. Oh really? Yes, Where does he teach? Uh, uh, West River Valley. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, at the at the high school, middle school level, or elementary. Yeah, elementary. Level? Yeah. So it's you know, being able to to relate to what the 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 students are actually passionate about that's what gets them feel like they have a stake in their future they, 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 they have a stake in what they're, they're learning because it's what they naturally think about anyway if you can tap into that even during a math class or a science class which i actually took a physics class in college specifically because it was the physics of music so even though i wanted not to do with science it's like well this is the closest i can get yeah that's me your science club? It did, yeah. yeah cool. <laughs> That's neat. Well, I would love to see all the local schools hire you. I would as well. To come to the classroom to <laughs> sort of do an assembly for the class. Yeah, so so I do, um, I, I, I have a number of positivity workshops that, that I do that are specifically geared towards the kids, whether from elementary, middle, on, on, on to high school talking about the magic of, of kindness, the uh, sort of uh, helping them choose a life path, helping them to, to, to get along with each other, with people of different backgrounds, you know, learning to get along with people, and then also overcoming risks for anxiety, depression, and, and suicide, which is a huge one, mm -hmm. because especially as they're, as they're getting older in the middle school and high school, I read a, a, a paper recently that said that in the average high school, three students will attempt suicide this year in, in each high school. And it's, it's not getting better. It's very true. Yeah. And that anxiety starts at a very young age. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I can. Yeah. I've seen it. And it depends on the environment. The environment depends on the chemical makeup in their, in their, in their brains. It depends on their biology. It depends on the food that they put into themselves. It, it's, it's all connected. It can start pretty in utero, depending on I mean, given another situation. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it in very young children. That's a and I love that we now know that rewiring can happen. Yes. And so, you know, you're having a program where you're going in and you're talking to someone who maybe already has some predisposition in helping to rewire future decisions that they're going to make. Yeah. Yeah, I, I public schools, I mean, all over the country, you need people like you, because you're talking about making, con I mean, making connections. It's absolutely. Making connections is everything. Tapping into their interests is number one, and helping them make connections to those interests um, goes along with them. And we've, it definitely, I'm, I'm sad to say, we had a couple of elementary school students in our district commit suicide, and elementary. so it really is very sad. This is, this is I live in Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C., and it really is. We've had a few districts. Well, I'm talking about the entire school district, which is um, we're, uh, Fairfax County, Virginia, is the, I believe, the 10th largest school district in the country. 
So it is a very large school district, but in but still, how in many my times county, do we hear about elementary school yeah, students. Yeah, we've had two students in recent years. It's pretty sad. Well, and that's not counting the high schoolers. Yes. I'm just talking about elementary. So, and I think our local public schools are doing a great job of um, teaching kindness. That's good, and um, which is good, and uh, diversity acceptance. Um, one thing that uh, the creators of our curriculum, nationwide actually, and taking a look at the core curriculum, the core standards, um, helping teachers uh, understand the importance of making connections and looking at students' interests and how can we do that when we address the core standards. And I think teachers get confused, especially the teachers, and get really confused and focus on the, focus on the, on the core standards, not the students. You know, I mean, it's like a little backwards. So having someone like you remind the teachers or teach the new teachers that it's really the student. There's also at the center is the student and reaching that student and to be able to help that student learn or meet the core standards. Um, you said you have you have curriculums to work with students. Do you have curriculums to work with the teachers and the supervisors? So, people so actually, this, this presentation I'm working with school on Monday for the staff. Nice. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. So I, so I have, I have a couple different programs that are meant to influence the influences. Yeah. Can influence the teachers. That multiplies this across the school body. And then, um, you know, eventually influence it for people in the middle class, going to the federal government. <laughs> at, a, at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if we can influence the people now. You have to start more at a local level. I right. Guess. Exactly. Well, I like the idea exactly. of you doing a magic show yeah. for the politicians and, you know, like during the Senate. Oh, please. Cool. Come on down. Yeah. yeah. I wish you'd come down to our area. I know. Maybe start at the Vermont. Yeah. Talk to Bernie. Yeah, talk to Bernie. That's right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I hadn't considered that. I can see where you would definitely make some positive uh, changes in people's thinking. I really mean it. I wish you could come down to our area too. And you would have a lot of support. so sucked into one side of things that we forget the real reason why we're here. It's the government of the people, for the people, by the people. But what about the people? <laughs> right. <laughs> Focusing on all these other things and policies and procedures that aren't necessarily serving us even though they're supposed to. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, and I've noticed in my lifetime, well, since I, well, I started noticing it when I was, especially in college, but maybe in high school, I'm just kind of, I mean, I think it's a age-old, ancient uh, thing, is this whole thing of grief. And um, that is sort of, I see what grief is really taken out of our environment. Um, and um, but I, you know, I saw it developing. Everybody has to have a place on the beach, right? That's the goal. We have to have a place on the beach. So a place to go on the beach, right? And then it just, and then it becomes this competition. It's like, how can I make enough money to get a place on the beach, and to get my own boat, and, you know, all this stuff. And, uh, and we have to make it really cool to want solar panels. Yes, yes. <laughs> like that's what everybody wants. Well, that's what I want. And to drive, you know, a vehicle that has a low, the lowest carbon footprint. Everybody wants that. The new Nissan Leaf. Yeah, everybody wants a Leaf and solar panels. 
Yeah, that's what we want, is to influence people to think that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's the new cool. You've made it. I mean, I can't have an SUV in Israel, I have an SUV, and the brand new leaf is like a real car, it's not like a little car that they, they get blown off the road, but it's a real car, and it's solid. Like a leaf in the wind. Right, exactly, maybe that's what I mean. But the new one is a real car. I can see those, yeah. Yeah, I saw one charging at the, the hybrid plant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the green maps. And they said, oh. Once you buy one, you have it for life, by the way. You can just afford it. As long, and if you have a garage. Or a and it's a good selling point for people who already have money. And we want them to be more in money. That's what we need. Well, look at all the Tesla, is it Tesla um, charging ports? That's a market for you to Oh, yeah, I think it's a whole lot of those, but it's specific for a specific car, right? Tesla, right? No, it's all, it's all electric. Yeah, oh, any electric? Electric, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just oh. a, a Tesla brand charger. Mm -hmm. Maybe they make oh. the charges. Oh, we're moving into our future. The future of <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Tomorrowland. <laughs> um, I have been running out of time. Yeah, actually, I, I'm looking at the time. We have just a couple moments left. I thought maybe as a wrap up, I have one final magic trick oh, that will tie everything that we've talked about today. Because we've gone all over the place about positive influence, how to be a positive influence um, for people uh, below us, the people with us, and the people above us. Here's a magic trick that is, you know, everyone's together in the deck of cards. You know, they all, all their faces are, are, are different, but all the backs are the same. You ever notice that? It's just, it's just like people. Let's see. Uh, your name again, Beth. Beth? Is it Beth? You do me a favor. Let me just move this stuff out of the way. You're gonna just choose a card that you identify with. I don't want you to feel influenced. Like, <laughs> like the Queen of Hearts. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're not identify with. That's okay. okay. What, what card calls to you? Um, you're just going to point at it, just, just so, so we can all see what it is. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yes, this one. Which one? The, the, the Queen of Diamonds? Yes. So I have to ask, I have to ask, why the Queen of Diamonds? Were you influenced in some way by the Queen of Diamonds? Well, I didn't want to choose the Queen of Hearts, because I'm a user of Hearts. I see. <laughs> but I probably would have chosen the Queen of Hearts. She is the Queen of Hearts. Oh, you are the Queen of Hearts. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyway, the Queen of Diamonds, um, you know, a diamond is shiny, mm. sparkly, and full of light. So that aspect of the thing. I see. I see. I like that. Shiny it's something light. shiny and it's pretty. Reflecting light. Oh. Reflecting light. I like that. That's true. So that's that's a good reason to choose that then. So it's something that is important to you. It's like we're talking about you know, what are you passionate about? Well, this is something that you, that is important to you. Just like life though. We find something that we're excited about, and I'm gonna mix the cards face up into face down. Now you notice by doing this, it places all the cards out of whack. But we know where your card is. We know your card is face up, we know it's on top of your deck. But by mixing the cards like this, now there are some cards that are face up, there are some cards that are face down. What we could do to find your card is just go through the cards one at a time like this until we come across the Queen of Diamonds, because we know your card. You can ignore all the face-down cards. Just look at the face-up ones. That would be one way to do it, but not the interesting way. In fact, you're going to help me out for a moment. Take your hands like this. You know what this does? It warms up your hands. It does warm up the hands. It does get us ready, because I've been taking sign language lessons. This is one of my favorite signs. It means motivation. 
how do you motivate you? What motivates you? Well, this does. <laughs> then we cast a shadow over the deck. I'll move it closer. You cast a shadow over the cards. Oh, you feel it? You feel that? You can see it, but, but you're not feeling it. Well, let's take a look and see what happens. Even though all the cards were facing every which way, despite that, despite the craziness of life, all the cards have rearranged themselves. We've influenced them to face the same way. Oh, except for one. You think it's the Queen of Diamonds? No. You don't think? Oh, you don't think it's the Queen of Diamonds? Because I thought I saw the Queen of Diamonds on the bottom. Well, here we have. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what this card? <laughs> It's a blank card. Well, yeah, it is a blank card. This is this is the surprise. I love you. Babe. This is the clean slate that I like to think our positivity talks creates for us. It creates this sort of we get so wrapped up in the craziness of life. This is the clean slate that we're hoping for. When we have the clean slate, that helps us to create what we're looking for. In this what? case, it's the Queen of Diamonds. But it <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, nothing up. Let's see. I don't want you to think I'm cheating. <laughs> no, no. I am cheating. I just want you to think that I am. Hey, where did that come from? But this is all about positive influence, yeah. about transformation, yeah. transforming our own lives. But not just on the face, but diving deeper by asking those probing questions for total life what? transformation. Oh my and when we transform ourselves, we can empower others <laughs> to find their goals. Oh. A a They're all different. Making for oh. much yellow, more interesting what? world. <laughs> and that's the magic of positivity. Wow. Oh my God. Oh, so nice to, be, to see you again. Yeah. Glad you enjoyed that. Yes, thank you very oh, much. Very it was welcome. really wonderful to see you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was like frozen like a statue. Oh my gosh. Yes, it was nice to meet you too. Yeah. Take care. Yeah. Jan. Jan. And you were Beth. Yeah. And you were Deb. Oh, Deb. Yeah. So she lives in Rattleboro. Oh, yeah. But I was just visiting. So. Yeah. So nice yeah, I love coming. Thank you. <laughs> Beth, Beth lives on my street. Wow. Well, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.